and therefore to be able to disrupt. Is there an aggressive effort on the part of Al-Qaeda as well as other affiliated groups or other terrorist groups for that matter to develop um, uh, homegrown, American homegrown terrorists? So, so we, we definitely have seen uh, both from Al-Qaeda core in Pakistan as well as AQAP in Yemen an effort to reach out uh, beyond those those regions uh, into the United States to uh, to radicalize individuals who, who who are here who may be susceptible to uh, to that kind of a message. They may be simply wayward uh, knuckleheads, but they may be uh, they may well be inspired by uh, that message and and seek to carry out an attack. Uh, let me address that to you also, Director Mueller, since the FBI. Uh has jurisdiction over um, uh, domestic criminal and terrorist activity, uh, and I'd like your comments on what you see taking place from the standpoint of homegrown terrorists. Let me start by saying that uh, uh, the threat from AQAP, particularly with airliners, has not dissipated over the years. There's still that threat out there. The individuals who were responsible for the, uh, the previous attempts are still there. So I, I joined him with identifying that as a principal concern overseas. More directly at home, it is the, the uh, radicalization of individuals on the internet uh, who uh, develop the desire and the will to undertake a attacks. They're finding it very difficult to find uh, co-conspirators, others that would join in, but then again, the, uh, the uh, internet can facilitate that kind of uh, uh, a meeting coming together for an attack and is the lone wolves uh, 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 that we are principally concerned about. The, the other point I would put in terms of keeping you awake, it's cyber. And the fact that the, uh, what is happening in the cyber arena uh, cuts across any of our disciplines, whether it be counterintelligence or counterterrorism, as well as criminal. And uh, the, the various objectives, goals of uh, discrete individuals utilizing the, the cyber arena whether it be for criminal purposes or for terrorist purposes, uh, is has grown uh, to be right up there with AQAP, uh, homegrown uh, uh, terrorists, and uh, uh, cyber attackers. Thanks, man. Thanks, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, Senator Rockefeller, are you okay? No, you're not okay. No, I am. I think I'm okay. I've got a couple of questions I'd like to ask, but I'd l rather get to the the uh, closed here. Okay. Um, I know, Senator Wyden, you have a question you'd like to ask. Just, just, just one, Madam, Madam Chair, and I, I thank you. And this for you, Director Clapper, again on the surveillance front. And I hope we can do this in just a yes or no answer, because I know Senator Feinstein wants to move on. Last summer, the NSA director was at a conference, and he was asked a question about the NSA surveillance of Americans. He replied, and I quote here, the story that we have millions or hundreds of millions of dossiers on people is completely false. The reason I'm asking the question is having served on the committee now for a dozen years, I don't really know what a dossier is in this context. So what I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Thank you. I'll have additional questions to give you in writing on that point, but I thank you for the answer. Thank you very much, Senator White. Senator King? Just to uh, follow up with, on Senator Chambliss's questions, uh, my concern is uh, we keep talking about al-Qaeda, but my impression, uh, and Mr. Olson, perhaps I'll direct this to you, um, we, we have to realize that, that it only takes four or five people these days to uh, mount some kind of a threat. Uh, is there a danger that we are f so focused on, on al-Qaeda that we're going to miss the second cousin of al-Qaeda that arises in, in uh, Brazil or someplace that, uh, that, we're, that, that constitutes a serious threat? <coughs> Well, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I think that's reflected on, on, on this panel. Uh, Director Brennan, Director Muller, Director Clapper, all of us work very closely together to 
to look forward to determine where that next threat is coming from. Uh, we're very focused on, uh, for example, the activities of uh, uh, groups in, in North Africa that may simply be sympathetic to Al-Qaeda, but certainly haven't reached the level of being affiliated officially with Al-Qaeda. Uh, and so I, all of our organizations, and I, and I, I certainly I know I can speak on behalf of the, the people working at, at, at the National Counterterrorism Center, are, are laser focused on trying to identify that next threat. Are, you know, are we going to be perfect every time? The answer to that is, is no, but the, we are very, very focused on trying to look forward to see that next threat, and that's something that we're doing together as a community. Mr. Mueller. Uh, if, if I might uh, add, uh, we look at threats across the board, domestic threats. We have not forgetten, uh, forgotten uh, the bombing of Oklahoma uh, City Federal Building in 1995. And while, yes, we look uh, at threats from outside that uh, can uh, be ultimately uh, undertaken within the United States and look at homegrown terrorists, we look across the board and try to anticipate not only with international terrorists affiliated in some way or shape with al-Qaeda, with others who are affiliated with a more de uh, uh, extremist, uh, radicalized group domestically, groups domestically. Are you seeing any uh, increase in the, the number of those groups not, not related to Islamic extremists but more homegrown? I would say it, uh, it's to a certain extent uh, cyclical. If there are uh, groups uh, who uh, may lose their leaders, either they were incarcerated or um, have passed, uh, then the, the capabilities of that group, the, uh, the, uh, in order to uh, undertake an attack, would be uh, diminished. We've seen that off and on. We also see that many of the more radical groups or extremist groups uh, do not want to be associated with uh, the lone uh, wolves and will push them out, uh, which is a problem because if you have surveillance or you, uh, you can understand what's happening in a a substantial extremist group to have somebody uh, with the intent to undertake attack uh, with nobody around them, uh, that presents a, a, um, a separate special challenge. We are seeing uh, in Northern Africa, as, as, as Matt alluded, uh, a proliferation of um, Ansar al-Sharia chapters in Tunisia uh, and Libya, to name two cases, which seem focused much more on local regional issues Western interests only as they are present in in those particular countries and less inclined, at least at this point, to promote uh, tax elsewhere, uh, although that's always a possibility. So we watch these groups as they evolve in their uh, objectives. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Let me thank you, everyone, for, first of all, on behalf of this committee for your service to the country, for your presence here today, for your testimony. And uh, to those of you that didn't have a chance to respond, we look forward to seeing you uh, in the committee on some of these issues. Uh, we will recess um, and reconvene directly uh, to our skiff uh, right down the hall uh, at the call of the chair. So thank you. And this committee is recessed. In a few moments, the Senate Judiciary Committee passes bills regarding background checks for gun purchases and school safety.